Great. Again, welcome. Um, thank you, everyone, for being in presence. This is our first Bernalillo County Commission administrative meeting here in Ken Sanchez Chambers in Alvarado Square. Um, and I call this March 15th, 2022 administrative meeting of the Bernalillo County Commissioners to order. Um, welcome to the first person into the first in-person meeting in our chambers, Ken Sanchez. And I will ask um, for Commissioner Quesada to lead us in. Uh, there'll be a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Quesada. Thank you, Madam Chair. And before before I do that, uh, you know, it's a great honor. And, and I didn't do this by myself uh, to name the Ken Sanchez uh, Commission Chambers. It was uh, supported by all the commissioners and, and the community. And I think before uh, we do a little moment of silence, um, although um, our world is uh, seems to be in a, quite the turmoil at this point, uh, let's not forget those people who are dealing with that, but maybe take a moment within this, the moment of silence to reflect back on Ken Sanchez and, and the kind of work uh, that he did. Um, I just want to say that, you know, when, me, when Ken was, was alive and, and we were doing community work, we didn't always agree on everything. Um, you know, a matter of fact, we disagreed on, on a lot of things, but that's what this is all about. That's what this process is all about. And it's about us coming together, uh, agreeing to disagree and finding a middle ground in compromise. And that was something that Ken was really good at. And I just want to remind us that that's what we do up here is we try to find compromise. We try to find a way forward. And so what better to name uh, a chambers after a, after a man who was willing to do that and was capable of doing that and that we would take and learn from that example. So thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, please join me in a quick moment of silence. I would have enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Quesada. And I just want to know we are planning on having a sort of um, bigger honoring of Mr. Ken Sanchez at a future commission meeting. Some of um, his folks that wanted to be here aren't here today. So we'll be doing that at a later date to really honor him and the um, induction of these chambers. Mr. Ken Sanchez, thank you. Um, Deputy County Manager Grady, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the commission, we do have one item, which is uh, item 7C, uh, Technical Services, New Mexico Department of Transportation, uh, cooperative, cooperative agreement uh, for funding to support 2nd Street and Rio Bravo intersection improvements, project to be removed from the consent agenda and added to the agenda as item 9C under adoption of resolution. Remembers for amendments to the motion. That is, that, are the only, that is the only change or modification to the agenda. Thank you. And a vote will be required for that change. Okay, great. Um, I move to approve. Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? So moved. Thank you. Um, so great, we're going to start off on some great positive notes today. Um, we am sponsoring an acknowledgement of May Ling um, The Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners does hereby honor um, May Ling Armijo, County Manager's Office. May Ling joined in 2011 as the Director of Economic Development she immediately and diligently worked to bring forward projects to achieve the Board of Commissioners' expanded vision for the county's economic development growth. The Economic Development Department's record of success reflects her leadership, commitment, and dedication to the county. 
During her career at Bernalillo County, Mei Ling and her team have achieved great success with 69 quality projects approved by the Board of Commissioners and that generated 5,000 full and part-time jobs, in addition to over $1 billion in private investment. We appreciate and re respect the work that Mei Ling has done, and we know that New Mexico will continue to benefit from her leadership and business acumen as we have. Those who know her and have had privilege of working with her have experienced firsthand that Mei Ling is about business and that business is conducted with integrity and a principled work ethic. Mei Ling has executed her responsibilities intelligently with expertise and competence honed during her extensive career in public service. While it is not possible to quantify and qualify Mei Ling's significant contribution to the county, she leaves us with the forward-thinking vision and roadmap that will inspire others in years to come. We would therefore like to extend our deep gratitude for your dedication, professionalism, and outstanding service to Bernalillo County. You will be missed, Mei Ling. I didn't. I didn't bring my glasses, so I can't see it. But I. I think. My, I think they spelled my name right. So thank you. Um, thank you. And I told myself I wasn't going to cry, <laughs> but Aww. it is an emotional day because um, it's um, 11 years with the county, and and it's been with Marcos. And so I really am crying over Marcos, not any of you. <laughs> and so. Um, uh, so I feel like I'm breaking up, you know, with my partner in crime and in everything. And so I, uh, I, I know he'll be great as the new director, but um, um, I already miss you. So, um, but uh, thank all of you for your support and your professionalism. And I, I'd be remiss to say if I, if I didn't thank Shirley and Enrico and Elias, they, they were all very supportive in, in helping economic development become a success. Um, and Julie supported a lot of my um, adventures in the Navy, and I always knew I had a job when I came back, which um, you'd be surprised a lot of reservists and guards people still have challenges maintaining their civilian jobs when they go on deployment and whatnot. But that was a concern I never had with Bernalillo County, so I thank you. I thank you all for your support. Um, and I will miss you all. So thank I know that's shocking, but I will. I will miss you all. So thank you. Thank you so much. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Quesada. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also would like to say uh, you can't go. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll tell you that Maylene, uh, you know, puts words into action. Uh, and she also has always stood up for herself, which was kind of amazing when I first joined the commission. Uh, she told me no right off the bat, uh, which wasn't, wasn't a no that she couldn't do it, but no, we couldn't do it that way. And that let me figure out a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was something that made me feel like, you know, um, I could be successful in my role. Uh, because as you know, one of my biggest challenges in my district is economic development, is creating jobs and opportunities for the people in my district and Mei Ling, and I'm proud to have Marco still still there. I'm glad he didn't follow you, uh, but he's not allowed to. Uh, but uh, and, and it's it's that kind of staff that makes Bernalillo County successful. It's not commissioners. It's the staff that says no, not that way, but yes, this way. And you made uh, a big dent in my community, uh, and I'm sure everybody else's community. And you know, um, we all fight to move up and do and have other challenges and different roads. So I just want to wish you all the best in your new road, and God bless you. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. Madam Chair, go ahead, Commissioner. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, wants Commissioner Pizzotti, <laughs> followed by Comm <laughs> Vice Chair Benz. I know we're all like jumping to honor you <laughs> here. <laughs> Um, it could be the other way, so I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to miss you, and I know that you're just going to be over the border somewhere, so <laughs> we can come and visit you. But I guess what I want to share is my first year as a commissioner, you said something to me that is going to make me cry. Every time I think about it, you gave me, like, the best 
it was a little text message of support and I will carry that in my heart wherever I go. It has strengthened me and I think just given me the confidence to do what I need to do in my job and in my life. So thank you for that. And also, you know, the first year was we were meeting and then you know what happened the next year? The pandemic. <laughs> and I don't wanna let this go by, how much you and Marcos worked with all those pandemic funds and everything that that entailed, going through with a fine tooth comb, working with Shirley, of course, but seeing how can we get that money out into the community? How can we get that to our small businesses? And there are things that you did that are still ongoing because they were such a good idea, like the patio grants, right? The, the covered patios, things like that. And it's like, wow, that is such a great idea. And I know that started with you and with Marcos and supporting um, people with, with rent and things like that. There were so many things going on. And um, I see it's just here, us here today, so I'm gonna say this, that I know that sometimes the city of Albuquerque would come to you and ask <laughs> how you were doing it so they could do it. Mm -hmm. But I know you guys worked so hard, like, 24 seven, like for months at a time um, to make such a great impact with those pandemic funds. And it was phenomenal. So um, I hope that you're getting some rest. <laughs> Not <laughs> really, no. So. <laughs> I, I hope they don't work you as hard as we did at your new job. Thank but you. Thank you. Thank you. Take my love with you. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, I don't think any of you know this, but I first met Mei Ling in the community when I was at US Eagle Federal Credit Union, and my boss, Larry Jeter, had been working with Mei Ling, and we were trying to deploy funds, and we were working with businesses that were also going through the county, and I got a chance to meet Mei Ling, and it was just so easy. It was so common sense, and, and then when I got to work here with her, uh, same thing. Business development is about business development, and that's what you do, and that's all you do, and you just make it work. And And Bernalillo County is such a wonderful organization in that we get things done. Everybody in this room, you all get things done. And Mei Ling, you, you embody that spirit, and you just get things done, and I love it. And so anytime I have a question, you're always just, you don't beat around the bush, you're not... <laughs> You're not careful. You're not political. You just say, yeah, this is what this is what it is. I think it's a good idea. It's amazing that I'm still 11 years, right? Yeah, <laughs> How'd you do it? yeah exactly. So, and I too, uh, Commissioner Kazada, I, uh, when I first heard that she was leaving, I forbid it, uh, but she didn't listen to me. And so, uh, God bless you and, and, uh, happy, Thank you. happy journeys. And, and Marcos, uh, good job, man. You got big shoes to fill, but, uh, uh, she has the, she's given the, you a huge vote of confidence, and I support you in that. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner O'Malley. You're going to be last, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the chair. Um, I'm going to miss your reverent wit and sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I know you pride yourself in that. <laughs> but... Um, uh, I want to, you know, in trying to make things work, uh, you know, Commissioner Casada mentioned that uh, there are many ways, right, to support businesses. Sometimes we think of traditional ways, but you were always, I think, very open-minded and inventive in terms of how we could uh, work with businesses, and I really appreciate that. I always felt like I got a balanced view from you in terms of rate of return and all those other things, the questions I asked, I always felt I got a balanced view. And ultimately, that's what I want from staff. It's like, what is your opinion? Give your best guess as to how this, well, not even guess, I should say, but really you do the, you know, you have the expertise. What is it that you think we should do? Um, and ultimately, it's up to us to make that decision. But I appreciate that I always got that from you. Uh, uh, you know, the honest and honest review of different projects. And I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I wish you could have stayed in the county at least. You're going to go to another county. Come on. Anyway. <laughs> well, Shirley told me she wasn't going to retire until 
whenever. So it was a while. So I was like, well, I can't wait forever, surely. So <laughs> <laughs> we can't be surely either. Wait, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> right. I always told Shirley, I, I've made no bones that I was gunning for a job. And she's like, well, I'm not retiring for a few years. I was like, okay, well, I got to go. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thank All you, right. Commissioner. And um, finally, I would just say I've been here for a little over a year now, and I have, every time you've come, I always remember the but if not for <laughs> this and um, really asking those internal questions when we're thinking about what we're voting on. And, and you've, you and Marcos have been so incredible in making me feel like I can ask questions and really learn so much, a great deal from you all. So I know that um, our next door neighbor county will be um, thriving under your leadership. and. Um, Sad and happy for you to see you um, on to your next journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Don't walk away. Don't walk away. <laughs> oh, yes. So, so <laughs> when I came to the county in 2012, uh, I came as the budget director. And so I met Mei Ling, and she said, you'll do all right. So we became partners in crime. And what I most admire about her, I told her, you know, coming from PM, a lot of times you had to deal with people that were in smoke and mirrors. And I didn't like smoke and mirror folks. I like people that told you how it was, because I can handle that and I know how to deal with it. But they also, like Commissioner O'Malley said, she gave you options on different things. So we we did do a lot of good things together, you know, always, and we still do. And yeah, she told me she wanted my job. I said, that's interesting, because I was thinking about you for my job, but I'm not ready to go just yet. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to tell former Commissioner Johnson, <laughs> County Manager Johnson, Wayne, as I call him, that we'll come back and get you and bring you back to the county. Right, Commissioner? Okay, thank you. All sure. right. <laughs>Thank you. And we have another great proclamation this evening with sponsor Commissioner Piscotti. Thank you. And so this is an acknowledgement of the Bernalillo County Metro Air Support Unit. And so Larry Korn, and if you want to invite any of the other um, air support and rescue people up, BCFD, come on up and I will read this. Acknowledgement, Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office Metro Air Support Unit, acknowledging that in November, 2021, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Central New Mexico hosted an all online discovery festival with a virtual exhibit hall as a tool for teachers to incorporate into their lesson plans and to build an inspiring fun event for students and acknowledging that registered schools and teachers from all over the state were able to access and uh, access the content and engage their classrooms with content direct from local New Mexico STEAM, that science, technology, engineering, art, and math companies, and acknowledging that along with a number of other STEAM companies, including the Bernalillo County Fire Department, who presented the significance of the fire tetrahedron, the Parks and Rec and Open Space Department, who present a, a lesson on healthy watersheds, the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office Metro Air Support Unit, the MASU, gave a presentation that covered the technology used by this team for their search and rescue efforts, and acknowledging all presentations were innovative, informative, and well attended by Discovery Festival participants, and acknowledging the Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central New Mexico's team of judges watched and graded all of the exhibits and awarded the 2021 Discovery Festival Best in Show Award to the Bernalillo County Sheriff Office Metro Air Support Unit. And acknowledge, <laughs> it's so cool. This, this is what you're getting. <laughs> you're actually getting an award. Wait, but wait, I'm not finished. Yeah, this was like the little tease. Um, so acknowledging that in partnership with the Bernalillo County Fire Department and University of New Mexico Health Sciences, the Metro Air Support personnel provide an essential search and rescue response to the community. 
the Metro Air Support Team of rescue personnel have responded to hundreds of search and rescue requests throughout the county and the state of New Mexico, resulting in many successful life-saving missions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Bernalillo County Board of County Commissioners wishes to acknowledge and congratulate the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office Metro Air Support Unit for receiving this honor and for sharing their knowledge and experience with students and teachers throughout New Mexico. Done this 15th day of March 2022 in Bernalillo County, state of New Mexico, and signed by all the commissioners. So come on up, Larry Corrin, and get your certificate and your full award. This is Best in Show, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, presented by Honeywell 2021 Award. It's a pretty cool award. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I also want to mention that the Discovery Festival was sponsored by all five of the commissioners. Um, I believe we gave at one of the highest amounts. So we were given three presentations, STEAM presentations. Here, everybody stand up. Remember how we used to do it in the old days? <laughs> we do! <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah larry do you want i'm sorry under sheriff corin do you want to talk a little bit about your presentation and i think um the representatives from big brothers big sisters would also like to say a little bit about that festival because it was a huge deal but with Bernalillo County Fire Department as well, and, uh, and also University of New Mexico. And then we also have another stakeholder here, um, the, the, uh, the tram management of the, of, of the uh, tram is here today too. And uh, some of the technology that we, we presented during that, uh, during that conference or that, that broadcast actually uh, people got to see throughout the world. And that was when we did the uh, rescue of the 21 people up in, on the tram. And so uh, that was just a glimpse of the technology. Standing behind me are, are the guys who, the guys and gals who ended up doing all the work. Uh, there's a, this is just a fraction of them. The search and rescue community uh, is a big community and, and uh, it takes a lot of collaboration. But as a, uh, not only as, as the under sheriff and the pilot for the, for the air support program, but also as a licensed K through eight teacher, it's important that we uh, that that we educate our youth and inspire them uh, to to work together for for good and to apply science and, and technology. Uh, I I think uh, I think that's something that's that's lacking now, and it's a gap that needs to be filled. And uh, with that, uh, thank you, Commissioner, uh, Chair, Commissioners. I'm going to turn over the mic to uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Sebastian. Hello, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, I did want to say that um, for me, this is what I give presentations all the time, and it's one of the first I've done since COVID. So um, what an honor to be here tonight. And your words for Ken Sanchez was just very profound for me. I've been CEO for 25 years with Big Brothers Big Sisters, and it's very much a servant leadership position. And spent a lot of time with commissioners and city councilors, and, and you guys also are doing the servant leadership. You have late nights and, you know, um, being very thoughtful about our resources and how we utilize those. So thank you for your service and for honoring Mr. Sanchez. And with Big Brothers Big Sisters, especially during COVID, 
our work was incredibly challenging, like anybody serving kids, but the children that are referred to our program, and we serve over 1,500 kids every year in mentoring relationships, they come to us because they need additional adult supports. They don't have enough of what they need to thrive and succeed in school. So when COVID happened, one of the main ways that kids get support is going to school. They usually have a good relationship with a teacher. They get to see their friends. So when that's not happening, um, being able to reach out and touch them, we went completely virtual and we were in their homes and we were continuing our mentorship. And please know that hundreds and hundreds of volunteers in our community were still giving of their time to do whatever it takes to connect with their mentees and help them during this time. And um, so these guys that you see behind us, part of what they did was during this tough year when we're trying to do our events and trying to connect with people, they stepped forward and said, you know, not only are we just going to show up, which in itself is amazing, but we're going to do something like so incredible and so exciting that the kids are going to love us and they end up getting voted best in show. So that's pretty awesome. And what one of the best things that we can do in Big Brothers Big Sisters is ignite an interest in kids. So at a time when they may be in a crossroads and not know, you know, is it worth staying in school? Is it worth working hard? You know, I can, I see my siblings that have dropped out, whatever. Seeing something like this and going, how cool would it be to be air support and go save somebody? Those are the inspiring times that will ignite that interest in kids and, and mentor sees on that. And it's like, see, it's worth it. You know, let's work hard. Let's go explore STEM and different things. So that's that's what that's about. And I just want to share a really quick story because it's a story as you remember. One of my big sisters, I've been a big sister for 25 years, but my mentee, I was matched with her when she started as a freshman at South Valley Academy. And we were matched for four years in the program. And then when she graduated, we graduated into what we call our post-secondary class. She's now a junior at UNM. And one of the coolest moments for me is she sent me a text and she clearly was in a helicopter. And I'm like, where are you? And she said, I just got hired on with the medevacs and I get to go across the country. And she ended up in California and doing an air rescue and everything. And just, you know, that was her dream that we worked on. And, and it's so fun to be a part of that. So you all... You know, you may not see it as visibly every day, but you're a part of that. And when you support us and do the things that you do in our community, you're supporting us and helping us do the work that we do. So thank you for your service leadership and thank you for supporting Big Brothers Big Sisters. I think Sebastian wants to say just another word about the Discovery Festival. Yeah, just really quickly. Um, my name is Sebastian Martinez. I'm the Chief Development Officer for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, Discovery Festival is about igniting that spark. And I think all of us can point to time in, in our life where we had that spark ignited that I want to become a commissioner, I want to become a police officer, I want to go fly a helicopter. And uh, most of the things that we, we really focus on is connecting companies with, with our kids in our community. Um, because I think, especially in a lot of our, our rural areas, they are not given that access. And we're trying to break that barrier. Um, and we're very proud to, to announce that we had over 4,000 students participate in, Bullf or, excuse me, in Discovery Fest this last year. So we're gonna to continue to grow that. I hope you guys will continue to participate and support our uh, endeavor to spark that interest. Um, and if you guys need anything, feel free to reach out. So that's all I have to say. And we're always looking for mentors too, so. Thank you. <laughs> like Maylene, I don't know what Maylene's doing. <laughs> Just one final word. Thank you commissioners for your support and thanks to the, the, the uh, management staff and, and uh, like Shirley here and the, and the chief uh, to uh, inspire us to continue our work. I mean, sometimes we do these things on a, on a shoestring budget, but we make things happen. We're, we're accustomed to doing more with less. And, and uh, the air support unit, has an, it, it's successful because of that drive and that hunger uh, to be able to serve. So I want to thank you guys. Anna, thank you. That rescue was like from a movie. <laughs> um, but thank you for your year-round service. And also both of my children were had a big brother and a big sister. So um, love the program. And they stayed um, in close relationship to them for many years, even after the match. Um, 
Julianne, is there anyone signed up for public comment today? Madam Chair, we have one signed up today. Wonderful. Mr. Don Schrader, if you want to come down. Oh, what an honor. <laughs> I strongly compliment thousands of Russians who have publicly damned Putin's war against Ukraine. If I lived in Russia, would I have the courage to risk arrest and jail to oppose Putin's mass murder in Ukraine? Millions of people under communist dictators and millions of people under U.S.-backed dictators would be so glad if they could speak on television their conscientious convictions with no fear of being arrested hours later to suffer torture, prison, execution. All wars by every nation, the United States, Russia, every nation, all wars by every nation, murder moms, dads, and kids. My weekly TV program airs every Monday evening at 8 p.m. on public access cable channel 27. My program is also on YouTube at Don Schrader, that's S-C-H-R-A-D-E-R, -E clearly from my heart, those six words. Don Schrader, clearly from my heart. Contact Joseph at 717-1667. If you want to do your own TV program totally free, including a free technical crew to run the cameras and controls on public access cable channel 27. Freedom of speech, use it or lose it. Thank you so much, Mr. Don Schrader. Appreciate it. What an honor to have you in our chambers this evening. Madam Chair, can yes. I speak? Yes. Vice Chair. Mr. Schrader, I just want to tell you it's good to see you again. Uh, the last time we spoke was about uh, 25 years ago when I was a student at UNM, and we had several conversations, and you were always so gracious and, and easy to talk to, and I always enjoyed watching your cable show late at night. So uh, glad to see you're still just doing well. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. I agree. Um, great. So we're moving on to approval of minutes. I move to approve the February 22nd, 2022 administrative meeting minutes. Can I have second. a second? Thank you, Commissioner Piscotti. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any office opposed? Great. Approved. Um, moving on to approval of consent agenda. Um, Madam Clerk, please provide a resolution number for item 7A. I move to approve the consent to, oh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chair, would you like to go ahead and go through all of them or just 7, 7A? Yeah, I think there's only 7A in my. Okay, 7A. Okay. That is FR 2022-21. 20, Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I move to approve the consent agenda. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Quesada. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Great. Consent agenda is approved. Moving on to item eight, adoption of ordinance um, to the county code. Madam Clerk, please provide an ordinance number. Yes, ma'am. Ordinance 2022-4. Thank you. Um, so A, Fire and Rescue International Fire Code 2021, Chief Pettis to present. There we go. All right. 
Madam Chair, Commissioners, it's an honor to be in front of you in our wonderful, beautiful chambers. It's a great, a great night for the county tonight. Um, what's before you this evening is the adoption of the International 2021 International Fire Code. Uh, this code will put us in line with the city of Albuquerque and the state as it relates to regulations surrounding any type of, of fire uh, or build it, and it aligns with the building code as well. Um, there aren't a lot of changes that were made to this. We didn't make a lot of amendments to it. We're actually allowing the code to kind of stand on its own. We felt that that was best. There are slight amendments that were made to it, which we you were all given about 60 days ago, and I stand in front of you for any questions. Any questions? Discussion? Madam Chair, for the record, there was nobody signed up for the public hearing on this item. Thank you. I need to approve. Oh, so I was no, going go to move ahead. to approve. Somebody, whatever. Somebody moved to approve, I guess, ahead of me, so that's okay. No, I think I was talking. Oh, sorry. I, I moved, moved to approve. To approve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. We have <laughs> Commissioner um, O'Malley moving to approve. Um, any, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Any uh, opposed? Great. Your item passes. Thank you for your support. Thank you. We'll move to item to nine, um, adoption of resolutions. And this is what you're talking about, Madam Clerk. Please provide resolution numbers for items 9A and B, please. Yes, ma'am. 9A is AR 2022-22, and 9B is FR 2022-23. And C doesn't have a number. I don't think there's a thing. Madam Chair, C. we haven't made the uh, amendment to C yet, so we will issue that number when we do yeah. that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, so we have um, County Manager Emer uh, Emergency Powers by um, Commissioner Piscotti. Thank you. Um, I Just a little history. It was two years ago this week, uh, March 17, 2020, when um, I, I guess I was the vice chair at the time and I called a special meeting um, because of the COVID pandemic. Um, I, outside of here, I also have a, a master's in public health and I was looking at the numbers and I said, this is really bad, this is gonna be bad. And so I called a special meeting of the Bernalillo County Commission at the time and I said, we need to put into place some emergency powers for the county manager because we don't really, there's so much uncertainty about the pandemic. We don't know how this is going to go and we want to make sure that the county is flexible and light on its feet and that the county manager has the powers that she needs to sign off on whatever may come. And so um, we got through it brilliantly, we are back here in the chambers together as a commission. And so I thought this would be a good meeting to um, bring forth another resolution that would um, trim back a lot of the powers that were given in that first meeting two years ago that would limit the county manager's emergency powers to um, things that, um, that we really wanted to move fast on, which would be accepting any kind of emergency aid, like federal funding or resources. And so I, I just wanna say this, that over the past two years, the county manager has never actually used those emergency powers in, the, in our COVID response. And I think that's important to state because the teams working, the county manager, working with county legal, Ken Martinez, working with Richard Clark, working with Chief Perez, our emergency management team, did all of those things over the past two years with, um, you know, the work at making sure that people could work at home, um, getting together uh, mask, the PPE distributions, the vaccine clinics, which were huge, huge undertakings. And that was all done without emergency powers, but it was done because of the great partnership and teamwork. And so I thought at this point, it seems like a really good time to rescind some of those other powers, which if, if you actually look and read that 
that first ordinance that we were working off of, it had a lot of extraneous stuff that we would probably never use, um, like shutting down gas stations and um, implementing a curfew. So this is just a much more streamlined version um, of granting limited um, emergency powers to the county manager. And if anything, you know, if anything does come up, which I'm hope we are all hoping that the pandemic does not spike in a way that we will have to do something really drastic. But if that happens, we can call another emergency meeting and, you know, reestablish emergency powers. But at this point, um, I think that it's it's time it's time to limit that that first emergency powers resolution. Um, so I move for approval. Um, do I have a second? Okay. If, um, without hearing then, um, thank you, Mr. Pascotti, for bringing this. We don't have a second. Thank you. We'll move to item 9B, Behavioral Health Initiative, with um, Charlie Verplo to present. Good evening, Chair, members of the Commission. Thanks for having me this evening. Um, this item is really a small agenda item to move some money from the Behavioral Health Initiative account to the housing account. So the Behavioral Health Initiative has $1 million that's been allocated to our single site program. And we want to move 448000 of that million over to the housing department so they can pay for deposits and rents for this provider. Historically, the housing department has always paid for the deposits and the rents in this case. So we want to streamline the efforts and make sure that the payment goes smoothly over to the provider. So it's really a movement of money from one account to the other and need to bring it forward to you for approval. Madam Chair, I move approval. Second. Thank you, I, uh, Madam Chair. This discussion. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would just like to say, and I know that we've talked about this, that um, this money is going to HopeWorks, which was in the news a couple of months ago um, about some issues with the city of Albuquerque. And so I spoke with you, and it seems like this particular pot of money is um, it's more straightforward going specifically through our housing department to specifically pay for rent. So um, I just hope that we continue to monitor and make sure that this money is really going to help people and that that process is transparent and um, that it, the money is, is just all going for what it's intended, which is to help um, people who are not housed to have um, some stable, safe housing. Yes, thank you, Chair Commissioner. Um, appreciate that comment. And absolutely, the county has really particular stringent requirements related to contract compliance. So we'll be ensuring that all the pieces related to the contract are complied with and that they're able to provide the services that are outlined and the objectives that are outlined in the contract. Um, we'll absolutely bring you guys updates as we move forward with this service. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Scotty. And I just wanted to mention that I think this is such an important um, piece to what I keep sort of referring to as the ecosystem of how we're thinking about folks living unsheltered, the folks suffering or living with the disease of addiction or um, mental health needs. And so these single site supportive housing um, is such a needed space that um, that I'm just excited to support. And, and thank you for your leadership. And I see Miss Betty Valdez in. And um, thanks for all the smart folks coming together to, to help provide some relief to our communities. Madam Chair, can I ask a, a clarifying question? Yes. Um, first, I want to thank you at HopeWorks for all that you do. I've worked with you over the years uh, when it was, was it St. Vincent's? Um, so great work. Now, the, the single site uh, housing, where is that? So it's located on the campus of HopeWorks. So it's right there on the corner, I believe. It's Mountain and Third. Gotcha. And so, and this, <clears throat> this pays the uh, rents 
for individuals in that uh, facility? Yes, sir. The rents and the deposits for individuals that will be located in that facility. It's a 42 unit um, site, so they're able to provide both the vouchers for that site, and then that is a single site, so it's support, supported with a lot of other supportive behavioral health services right there. So they have a psychosocial rehab and an ACT program there on site. So those individuals that are a little bit higher acuity, that are recidivating through higher acuity services like the emergency room or the jail, we can bring them into a place like this and help them to be more successful. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion um, to on the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. You have a pass. Great. We'll move on to item 9C. Um, Madam Clerk. Yes, ma'am. 9C, FR 2022-24. Thank you. Um, and we have Brian Lopez to present. Yes. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Uh, to echo some of the other sentiments, it's good to actually see everybody in person. Um, this item is uh, for the New Mexico Department of Transportation uh, Cooperative Agreement for funding to support uh, the Second Street and Rio Bravo intersection improvements, uh, federal project number A300-942. Uh, for this item, we are requesting an amendment to the third motion, which is uh, currently listed uh, uh, to you uh, within your agenda. Uh, the first motion was for the commission to approve and accept the New Mexico Department of Transportation Cooperative Construction Agreement for the Second Street and Rio Bravo intersection improvements. Uh, the second motion was to authorize the county manager or designee to execute and approve any future funding amendments or agreements for the project. And then the third one, uh, which we are requesting uh, to approve as, as amended, uh, is to approve the financial resolution accepting budget provided by fiscal year 2023 highway infrastructure, COVID supplemental urbanized funds in the amount of 3.5 million. Um, the previous agreement that we had from the DOT um, just included uh, $2 million of federal funds and a local match of $340,824. Um, they did come back uh, and uh, assigned the 3.5 million for the project uh, in COVID relief funds. Um, we did receive this agreement here recently with a short uh, timeline uh, to get it approved and get it back to the DOT to, in order to authorize the use of those funds. Um, but in our haste to get that in, we did uh, make a mistake in the language for Motion 3 where we did not uh, reference the financial resolution. Um, per this current agenda item and this $3.5 million in COVID supplemental funds, we do have the advantage that with those federal dollars, uh, they do not require uh, a local match. So with that being said, that will save the county approximately $500,000 uh, for that local match. Um, a brief summary on the project, uh, the Rio Bravo and Second Street uh, intersection improvements uh, is going to include uh, turn lane improvements to a Second Street and, and Rio Bravo, um, acceleration and deceleration lanes on Rio Bravo uh, as, as required, um, lane widening, uh, traffic signalization, lighting improvements, um, a, a uh, quiet crossing improvements at the, the rail uh, crossing that's there in, in the vicinity, and then better access uh, to the rail runner facility. Um, in addition, this project is part of uh, an, an, an additional uh, Rio Bravo corridor project that we have in the area that will ultimately uh, have uh, full improvements through the Rio Bravo corridor from the recent NM, NMDOT I-25 Rio Bravo intersection uh, down to Rio Bravo and, and second. And uh, with that, I can stand for any questions. Oh, I don't. I was just going to move for approval. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Great. Your motion's Great. approved. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to drive down Rio Bravo. It's all done. Great, we're moving on to 10 for approvals. Um, we have Enrico Grady to present, concurrence to appointment economic development director. Oh, thank you, Madam, uh, Madam Chair. So this next item is uh, Madam, Madam Manager, Julie Baca would like to support and recommend Mr. Marcos uh, 
Marcos to this position. She's, he's been working quite closely with Bay Ling over the years. They are a, uh, they were a dynamic team for the county. We're delighted to have them aboard. And, but this particular motion does require concurrence from the, from the uh, commission. And so um, with that, I will turn it back over to uh, the Board of County Commissioners for uh, your action. I'd like to be the one that presents the motion to provide concurrence for the appointment of the Economic Development Director, Marcos Gonzalez. Second. Second. Uh. <laughs> We're fighting over you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? <laughs> <laughs> Just to comment, just I've sure. learned so much from you. Thank you. Yes, if you have some words and, uh, to share. I just want to say thank, thank you to the commission and thank you to County Manager Abaca. And I really appreciate this opportunity. And I just know the, uh, the team's really committed to continuing to uh, work and bring good projects that will benefit the community. So thank you so much. Thank you for thank your you. service. Thank you, Marcus. Great, and one more, uh, another exciting um, Office of Community Engagement and Outreach, public art. So there's artwork, two-dimensional. We have Kent Swanson to present. All right, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Uh, this item is to approve the county manager to sign purchase agreements with six artists for works of art that were selected through a competitive process that the Burnley County Arts Board undergoes twice a year. Um, and this is an excellent way that we have uh, as a county to support the local creative economy and local artists, uh, both emerging and established artists and in February, the Arts Board uh, reviewed the unsolicited proposals for existing works of art um, and then selected these six works for purchase. And these works will become part of the Bernalillo County Public Art uh, Collection to be installed in um, publicly accessible areas of county facilities. So I would like to present to the commission uh, these works. Uh, we'll bring up the slideshow here. And this is a really diverse group of works, both in terms of the artists and the medium, uh, mediums that they're working in. So Harriet Sotzi and Jane Abrams, her piece uh, was selected as well. Uh, Reg Loving is uh, an artist that is well established and well respected in the in the community. Ellen Feinberg's Mesa Dusk. Uh, Jennifer Pretzius, who works in encaustic, which is a beeswax medium, and we really don't have any um, encaustic pieces or very many in our collection. So this is these will be great additions. And Sixtus Dominguez, and these works. Total uh, $22,133, and there are established funds for the purchase of these works. And with that, I stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Is there any questions or discussion for Mr. Swanson? I just want to thank you for this um, process and providing access to more art for folks. And I move um, to um, authorize county manager to approve purchase agreement. Second. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Announcement of the next commission meeting, Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022, budget hearing at 9 a.m. here in the Ken Sanchez Commission Chambers, and Tuesday, March 29th, 2022, administrative meeting at 5 p.m. here at Ken Sanchez Commun Commission Chambers. Um, if there's no other uh, business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.